But right now we want to go to Wisconsin where the jury has a question in the Kyle Rittenhouse case. Um, any suggestions? Well, Your Honor, we can show them the videos here in the courtroom. We previously discussed this issue, and I understand the court's uh, personal feelings about it, but I do believe the law is clear that we have to show it to them in the courtroom. I don't believe that we can give them a laptop and let them view it in private. Um, so we have our laptop ready to go, plugged into the system, so if they give us any numbers that they want to see, we should be able to pull them up for them. Your Honor, I agree with the first part of that. I don't know what exhibits the jurors wish, wish to see. Um, we, the defense, has a real problem with them seeing the drone footage. And what has come out, we have a motion pending before the court for mistrial based upon disclosure of evidence. And if they want to see that, that's just tainting this jury more. And I ask the court to consider the drone footage was turned over by an anonymous person who we supposedly now know who it is, Mr. Beeman, on the first Friday of the jury. We were provided a copy of that from Mr. Kraus that was neither in the length or definition clarity that the state had. We did not get the full download that they received until Saturday of Sunday of last weekend after all the evidence was closed. And that's a real problem. Not to mention that since doing our research, the specific amped owner's manual says that when using AI to enhance photographs or videos, it is for investigative purposes only. It is not forensically to be used in a court of law and should be labeled as such. As I said, you're wagging your head no. Is that, is that true? The, the evidence in this trial does not say that. And I'm concerned because I don't want to get. I, 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 let's not get ahead of ourselves because right now the jury wants to right. wants to address this. Uh, we'll we'll certainly have to talk about it. I have not. Um, you know, it was interesting. I, um, along with uh, um, Some of, the, some of the other misinformation about the case that is widespread, and you gentlemen are as aware of it as I am. Um, now they had uh, some people f in the Milwaukee Journal, I, I think I read it, which is the paper that I used to deliver for a few years when I was a preteen uh, in the Milwaukee Sentinel, which are now one paper, um, that they talked to some professors at uh, the two law schools in the state and said it was un uh, odd, I think was the word, but I didn't rule on the motion to dismiss. I haven't even had a chance to read the motion to dismiss. I just got it yesterday. And I really think before I rule on a motion, I should let the state respond. So why anyone would think that it's odd for the judge to sit on a motion to dismiss, I have no idea. Uh, I think that, and the recommended course, I think, for judges, at least that was what I was educated to believe, was that motions to dismiss should be kept under advisement unless they're, they're crystal clear and they have had a chance for both parties to respond, which we didn't have in the heat of the discussion on the day the original oral motion was made. I never heard your side of it in terms of argument. So uh, I'm uh, uh, somewhat astounded, but of course it gets out into the general public. And I, as I spoke about it on the first day of trial, the, the result of the trial should be open to public scrutiny and people should have confidence in the outcome of the trial. I think we can all agree on that. Um, and it's just a shame that irresponsible statements are being made. Um, And as long as I'm talking about it, I guess I'm going to talk about that, too. The um, business about 
people not being identified as victims. How would you like to be put on trial for a crime? And the judge introduced the case to the jury by introducing you as the defendant and the person who is accusing you as the victim. And then throughout the trial, have all the references to um, to the um, complaining witness as being the victim. Is it so difficult to just use the term complaining witness instead of prejudging what the jury is here to determine as to whether there's a victim and, and uh, whether there was a crime committed? So I don't know what the, uh, well, I'll, I'll leave that comment at that. And then finally, I'm now reading about how bizarre and unusual it was to have the defendant pick the um, numbers out of the tumbler yesterday. And I would admit that I don't know that there's a, a large number of courts that do that, maybe not any. Uh, it, I do it because of an incident that I had in a case I tried in Racine. Oh, I'm going to say I, I estimated 20 years ago it could have been less than that, it could have been more. But um, it, was a, it was a big case, I think it was a murder case, but I'm not sure. Um, and there, were, there was a black defendant and there were uh, 13 jurors, one of whom was black. And when the um, clerk, the clerk, the government official, drew the name out of the tumbler, it was a black, the black, the only black. There was nothing wrong with it. It was all okay. But what do they talk about? Optics nowadays? Is that the word for things? That was a bad optic, I thought. I think people feel better when they have control. So ever since that case, I have, uh, which was, well, Ever since that case, I, uh, I've had an almost universal policy of having the defendant do the picks. Well, it had nothing to do with anybody's race or anything like that. And uh, I never had a complaint about it before. In fact, I haven't had a complaint about it here. Um, but uh, some people seem to be dissatisfied with that and uh, people who want to undermine the result of the trial. So that's today's statement on that subject. All of I, that, Your Honor, is why I do my best to avoid reading anything anybody's writing out there about <laughs> this case, because well, we I, know I, what happens in here, uh, right. and they don't. Well, and I don't always have that luxury, though, because I've got a. Sure. But anyway. Um, and, yeah, and, and uh, some of the things that have been said, too, I guess I'll comment on that, too. These are f f five very reputable competent attorneys that I've practiced with for years and I think it's shameful some of the things that are being done to these people and uh, I, I, I when I talked about um, problems with the media when this trial started that's we're there in part not, not fully but in part because of grossly irresponsible handling of what comes out of this trial I will tell you this uh, I'm going to think long and hard about uh, live television of a trial again next time. I don't know. I, I, I've always been a firm believer in it because I think the people should be able to see what's going on. But when I see what's being done, it's really quite frightening. Frightening, that's the right word for it. But back to the subject at hand. And I've, I've discussed my disdain for the rule. I, I'm not going to box you guys into accepting what I think is the better way and I sense from the statements that have been made that I think that in some respects you may even agree with me that it would be better if the jury could we're going to now have the, the jury will come down here to the courtroom and everybody will be shooed out of here as they should be and uh, I don't, I'm not even sure we're going to have to review the, the procedure that's been outlined but they get to watch it once? Is that what the rule is? I think they should be allowed to view what they want to view as often as they want to view it. Subject to my other objection, I don't have a problem with them viewing it multiple times at a certain point. I don't think that's, you know. I don't think that's right. Three or four times, I don't have a problem to sit here and just keep playing it, playing it, playing it. I don't think that's the right way either. Then it's giving more emphasis to one piece of evidence. 
Well, and, and, but sometimes there's one piece of evidence which is absolutely critical. And uh, I talked about the Zarnayev case. I, uh, I talked about the attempted murder case that I had in here. Um, and, and I don't know how we're going to police this anyway. Uh, and, and the other thing is when, they're be, when it is being policed and someone's watching them talk about it, well, can they freely talk, which is what we want. We want freedom of expression between the jurors. And so as they watch these videos, and to me, if they want to watch it 100 times, that's them. If it were a bench trial, and I, I've said this before, if this were a bench trial, and I put in my decision that I thought that uh, Exhibit 40, 486 was critically important, but I didn't want to overemphasize concentrating on it, so I left my, with questions in my mind about it and decided I better not look at it anymore. I should get reversed. That's an outrageous thing. Uh, but that's what we're forcing the jury to do because of the disrespect that the courts have had in this country for the juries. Um, uh, these are intelligent people. They, they get treated like um, there was a time when the the people, educated people in the town, were the the uh, physician and the lawyer and the, maybe the school teacher and the preacher, um, and the rest of the people were farmers. So obviously, they weren't as smart as those educated people. Right? Wrong. That's never been the belief of the founders of our country. It's never been true. And I think these people are as competent as the educated people, and many of them are educated, uh, to make these decisions. And that's where the founders of our country put the, uh, the power, not with us. <coughs> so I think it's insulting to the jury to tell them that they have to have these uh, restrictions on their viewing, but we're going to we're going to sit down with the books. We're going to find out what the exact procedure is, uh, and we'll await what they want to do. But for now, I will answer: Do we view the videos in private or in the courtroom? And the answer will be in the courtroom. Um, do you need to know the exact exhibit number or video or photo? Um, Well, we, there's two options. One is we can just, what, you can have all of them. Anyone gasping? Um, uh, you can have all of them, whatever you want. You can pick and choose. And uh, um, you can, uh, or you can describe generally what you want. Yeah, I, I think the exact exhibit number would be helpful, but if they can give us just a title or a description, we can also. I agree. All right, so what I'm going to write, you've got copies, so what I'm going to write on here is in courtroom, well, I better write it pen. Uh, general description. Uh, general description of what you would like. Is that all right? Yes. The um, only thing I would ask about with regard to your answer, Your Honor? Yes, sir. I'm not sure I heard you correctly about um, if we bring the jury back, you mentioned something about kicking everyone else out of the courtroom. Right. And I, I don't know what you're planning to do, but if you are planning on doing that, it might be helpful to tell the jury that so they understand that they would be viewing it without the public around. I don't know what you're having yeah, on. That's a good point. I, except that I don't know exactly who's going, who are going to be the kickies. Um, certainly uh, all the media and the uh, officers other than, uh, yeah, uh, the media and the officers. And, uh, and uh, the question is whether I, the lawyers and the defendant, I don't know what the answer is. We'll have to check that. And. Um, and, and I, I don't know if I'm supposed to be in here. I got the impression, and it's been a long time since I've read one of these cases, I got the impression it was actually supposed to be the bailiff, but I'm not even sure about that. Um, so we'll have to look at that. So I guess I'm gonna, 
I understand the, 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 the good suggestion that you've made, but I'm afraid I don't know an, enough of an answer right now. So I'm going to send this up now. Thank you. All right, we should make a copy in the upstairs. Then, Your Honor, can we be excused to go do some research on what you're you talking please about? Please do. Okay. Please do. Wow, lots to unpack here after that. So let's start with the jury's questions to the court. We have the exact language coming from our director of, of field operations there, Grace Wong, who was in the courtroom watching. And what was said was, quote, do we view videos in private or in the courtroom? Uh, and to that, the judge has answered yes. The jury will be brought to the courtroom to view the videos as many times as they like there in the courtroom. Second part of that was, Quote, do you need to know exact number of exhibit? And you heard the court talking. The, the members of the jury may not know the exact number as long as they can generally state the name. Say, for example, the drone video, the contested drone video. Everyone's going to know what they're talking about. So all that being said, uh, the other issue, uh, quite a talker, is, is how the judge uh, is responding to a lot of the criticism out there and misinformation. Uh, and the judge making it very clear why he made that decision, uh, something we've explained here on Court TV many times, about not referring to the individuals who were killed or injured as victims, because that is a legal conclusion, and that would clearly prejudice any defendant in a criminal case. And that is how this judge does it in all of his, his, his cases. And I've, I've had those restrictions put on me when I was a prosecutor. It is fair. It is just. It is not showing bias by the court. Let me bring in for some reaction Court TV anchor Ted Rollins, who's doing some special anchoring and reporting for us live in Kenosha, uh, just about a block away from the courthouse. Uh, Ted, what did you think about how the judge was very clear to put on the record how disappointed he is at so much misinformation being reported on this trial. Yeah, you know, I think that it's getting overwhelming. The amount of eyeballs on this and the amount of opinion, opinions about this case that are so, at, at some times, um, uh, taken to this level that is absolutely despicable. We showed you the stack of emails that has been filed with the court, and that was a few days ago. I'm sure it's grown even larger. And it's interesting he brought up the victim ruling because a lot of those e emails were talking about that. And, and it wasn't just, oh, I politely disagree with you, Judge Schrader. It was blank, 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 Judge Schrader. And um, he is... Um, reportedly, he has a guard now. Um, he, he's under protection um, that, uh, because of the, the amount of threats. All, the attorneys also on both sides are getting it. It is bringing out, I think, his intention was the best because we would see the legal process take place together in, those, in having our cameras in the courtroom. Unfortunately, it's bringing out the worst in people on some level, too, uh, the reactionary part, part of it. And uh, so you're seeing the frustration of him addressing that, addressing the criticism in the Milwaukee Journal that he was a paper boy back in the day. Um, you know, Judge Schrader is he's an interesting individual. He speaks his mind, and uh, whatever comes to mind, he lets it out. So, um, yeah, you know, I, my reaction is it's sad. It's sad that um, the that, that people are why I'm a, I think it's great people are watching the trial and, and have an opinion on it, but for people to take that extra step and um, send emails to the court, to these attorneys, make these threats, it's just despicable. And I think that's the frustration we're seeing from Judge Schrader. He's, get, he's getting worn down. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, understandably so. I, uh, you know, and I know we've been... We're just one media outlet, right, Ted? I mean, we know that we can be very clear on what the law is, what the facts are, and, um, you know, we can't speak for anyone else and what is being reported or not. But uh, very clearly, it's been evident to me from the outset, this judge knows the law. He knows the rules of evidence. He's been following it very carefully. And one thing I want to talk to you about, please, Ted, is how he, he clarified about that motion for a mistrial. And he said that, the way he's always been taught is that if that is made during trial, unless the answer in granting it is crystal clear, he as a judge always takes the motion under advisement, that it's not unusual for him. This is how he always proceeds. 
Uh, that's been what he's done throughout his career on the bench. And he said he wasn't going to rule on this for a couple of reasons. Um, number one, he said he just received the formal motion filed by the defense yesterday. Um, so needs a chance to read it. But number two, the state hasn't had a chance to respond. Um, but let's hone in on the, the one big issue. I mean, there are several things contained in this, but the one big issue is that drone video, right? That the defense is saying, hey, look, this was an unfair surprise state of Wisconsin that you kept the clear version of the video to yourself and you gave us a blurry copy so that we couldn't see what you're seeing. You know, and, and we didn't have a chance to review that clear copy that you presented into evidence. This is a portion of that motion there. Um, Ted, what do you think of this argument? Uh, do you think it has uh, some merit to it? You know, I, normally I would think, oh, it's probably just an error. But because of the behavior, quite frankly, from the prosecution in, in this case, I don't know. Um, it, it seems a bit odd. And, and the way it came to light was when they were going to play the video for the judge, the prosecutor said, oh, you know, we, we got a much better copy, judge. We'll show you that one. Um, it's a, and, and that's when the defense was like, wait a minute. And they looked into it. And you looked at the, if you look at the numbers of the um, the, pick, uh, the quality of the video, you know, uh, with the megabytes, it's pretty uh, astounding how much of a better quality the state's been working on and with, and it became a part of this trial late in the game. So, you know, is it, a, is it that big a deal in the grand scheme of things? When you add the other things that are going on uh, and have gone on in the courtroom, maybe, maybe we have to wait and see. But see, the, your other point of, Judge Schrader saying, yeah, I haven't ruled on this for a reason, and his reason is valid. And um, I think that, again, is that frustration coming out that he's, you know, he's got a, a bit of thin skin right now, and he, the peanut gallery is weighing in on a daily basis um, and, and saying, well, I would have done this, or I'm surprised this doesn't happen. And so he's, he's just reacting to that on the bench. Right. Uh, you know, uninformed opinions can be really scary. I mean, we see it all the time. Uh, Twitter can be a really scary place, especially when someone watches 10 seconds of a trial or sees a 10 second clip and thinks they know the whole story, uh, a rush to judgment. And, and really, if we go backward to what was the catalyst for all the protesting in Kenosha, there was a rush to judgment in the officer involved shooting with Jacob Blake. And there was so much misinformation, uh, mis uh, information about him not having a weapon. And he did uh, him fighting with officers. So many of this came out later. It didn't come out initially. And so uh, the judge has a really great point in this. Uh, Ted, I want to ask you about something that's been really concerning me. And, and that is the fact that this jury has not been sequestered. And, and you of all people can really speak to what is happening in Kenosha, where you are, what you're seeing outside of the courthouse. I'm not sure this jury is free from outside influence going home every night. Would love your thoughts on that, please. Yeah, I, I think um, in retrospect, that is something that should have been done uh, only because it's front page news, no matter what. And, and, and it's not just the trial itself. If you're a juror and, and, and you're, you're, you have your TV on or you're online um, and there's a story about the National Guard. Well, you might look at it and guess what? Oh, the National Guard has been deployed because of the Kyle Rittenhouse trial. Uh, I, the odds of this panel not being exposed is zero, uh, you know, to something, little bits. And, and the only way around that is sequestration. It's uncomfortable. It's no fun for the, for the panel. But in a high profile case like this that has been building momentum throughout, by the way, I think it was um, probably the better decision. Um, but, you know, it's been made. Right. Uh, I'm in agreement with you. And I, I know hindsight can be 2020, but it, it's like in this case, you know, we, we knew this was going to garner a ton of attention. It, it always has from its inception. And, and this is a pretty quick trial um, as, as well. So it wouldn't have been that long of, of an amount of time these members of the jury would have to be away from their family members. Uh, quickly, Ted, would you tell us, please, before we have to squeeze in a break, um, what is the mood like outside of the courthouse? I know you've been heading there when you haven't been uh, anchoring your show. What, what have you noticed, please? Well, inside and outside the courthouse, it's uh, like any case of this magnitude at this stage. It's pins and needles. People are just waiting for anything, and there's a tension level that uh, is palpable um, in this city and in the state, and uh, especially in and in and outside of, of the courthouse here, because people are just waiting for any word from this jury. Um, 
And we see it a lot in, in the trials we cover. And the bigger the trials, the more divisive the trials, and uh, it gets bigger and bigger. But this one is at a different level because, let's be honest, we, we can think we know what this jury is going to do. This one, uh, truly, I don't think anybody can honestly say, oh, I think the jury is going to come back with blank. Um, some of the trials we cover, it's pretty obvious where it's going by the end of the trial. Not so here.